right. So, hello everyone. Um, I wasn't really planning on doing this, but I thought, hmm, okay, well, I wanted to do this for other people that I know, and I thought I'd just do this specifically in general as well. Um, so, tomorrow will be, as many people in the world celebrate it, it's Christmas. But looking at it more from you know an astrological point of view, seeing how much we can learn from, at the very least, what we could get, what messages the stars are telling us starting tomorrow. Or for some people, it already is tomorrow, meaning it already is the 25th of December. So happy to, yeah, happy to oblige and happy to do this reading for you guys because it's for me it's actually fun and interesting and seeing what you know it's it's, it's fun is in a way that it's like it's it's elevating right so when we're here to elevate when we're here to grow it's we're here to also serve as well because we're here to um, really learn from the whole process of living in this 3d world so without further ado Here's a reading for two, just one chart. I'm actually going to go through three charts specifically. And based on what I've seen so far, we do have uh, here the sun is opposite of Vesta, actually mid heaven. But I would say the mid heaven does apply worldwide. I'm not going to go through the actual houses, but as you already know, the sun right now is in two degrees Capricorn. So for those who are familiar or not familiar with that, you know, it's a, it's the starting point of this, um, peop, you know, Capricorn. It's very Saturnian. It's a, the first deacon of Capricorn, the first 10 degrees deacon. It's called, that's why it's called Deacon 10. Um, and it um, refers to starting things in a very neutral Okay, I don't want to say neutral, but it's it's definitely working towards specific goals in mind, and it's very much oriented towards you know Capricorn is that sign of uh, I gotta work on this. I gotta you know a goal is very much the focus. It feels like your reputation's always on the line, or at least in this case, it's new beginnings when it comes to. Um, working towards something like that you really want to achieve right so if we looked at the terms and keywords of Capricorn as I look into my cheat sheet here while it loads <laughs> uh, I had taken a lot of notes for myself in terms of like this is how I do it I don't actually yeah I don't actually consult books that often I want to kind of make it a little bit more something that I can actually make use of so a lot of it feels like people's instead of shining out bright like the sun that it is you know in Capricorn it's you feel cautious about your identity you feel cautious about being out there there's a feeling of I gotta do it this way um, perfectionism comes through as well of course a very reserved very you know conservative feel to yourself but still in a very practical way to you know go for things that you want to go for things that make you very things that light you up things that make you feel very um you know working hard and discipline is a very capricorn thing right um you like being serious about things you like to commit to things you like loyalty you like determination you like um, consistency all those things with the public when it comes to or the world when it comes to the sun it does refer to a lot of things like governments uh, authority figures those kind of things so I would say this is a time when things are coming to you know, people might find themselves being in sort of having this sort of I guess limitations probably you know it might feel like there's a bit of domineeringness uh, feel um, controlling um, uh, sort of uh, 
judgments, you know, watch out for those kind of things that might happen, especially with the sun conjuncting, literally in perfect conjunction tomorrow, or in our case, uh, with the Imam Koeli, so you're in a deer, so that means that people might start to feel more internally like judging themselves, me a little, like you feel very, like you have to specifically succeed based on what you feel the world wants you to see, but you know, it's and it feels very strongly because Ixion is right there. It's conjunct the sun, and it. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, <laughs> let's go with the black. Let's go with actually. Let's go with no line, no line, and I'm just gonna go. Nope, there's no sign there, but um, so. Huh, okay. Oh, because the line is very thin. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> here we go. Okay, here we go. So now it's a little bit... Thick. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so we have the Sun conjunct actually many planets here. You have conjunct as far as if you want to. You can probably include Mars in there, but definitely a bit of that because Mars does influence... Um, Mercury, so in this case, Mercury feeling like there's a bit of assertiveness that has to come through when it comes to communicating. Self-expression might come through a little bit stronger, especially in very, very much exaggerated because it is in, the, in Sagittarius. And, and this is self-expression might also feel like people might start to feel kind of like an internal sort of violation because there might be control that they come across, but they do, this is a conjunction. So conjunction means people will know how to work with this energy. People will know how to work with discovering their own personal bliss. You know, Ixion is, yes, violations, but it's the reason why we have violations in the first place is because it's against something that we don't really want to do. You know, so what is your bliss? In this case, it's Capricorn. So the bliss of Capricorn, in this case of would be something like definitely like being having things in a very stable way like really absolute like like stable like certainty absolute control possibly if it doesn't go dark you know and people will be left to make decisions on what those are because Folus decides whether you know is it it's going to be what people think I people think of you people think of you in the public or um, you know personal opinion versus public opinion or the collective versus the individual you know Capricorn is very much attached to what the world thinks of it but Capricorn also has to learn that individualism is you know it has to learn in pro part of its journey is to already pick up the beliefs it picked up from Sagittarius so now it has to go into its lessons towards Aquarius which is personal freedom because you know the, the deacons if you look at the deacons when it comes to the Sun um, what lights you up first it's like that discipline thing and it goes into a very the next after uh, is Taurus so it's a very more a little bit more open a little bit more relationship oriented kind of Capricorn which is going into Venus um, but then after that we go into Mercury later so more communicative so um, you see how it ties in when it becomes more communicative it more it's more technical it's a bit more logical it's not so personal it has that it goes towards a polarity of the positive meaning okay it goes into what needs to be said for the sake of the pub the public for the what they need, really need to know the wisdom they need to pick up or the needs wisdom that they need to learn from from your personal experience you know being in Capricorn of course this is still in the early signs it's early degrees it literally suggests that these decision making things that we have to watch out for is do we control or do we let go it's really as simple as that or in, in many cases probably most likely just balance it you know you have to we have to learn how to be more cautious about what we say how we express ourselves 
that kind of energy that Sagittarius is still bringing through the Sun it's affecting that solar energy it's affecting our vitality it's affecting our ability to be in the moment and be childlike and really just shine but it won't we won't be able to shine if we're just controlling you know you don't want the Sun burning the rest of the solar system <laughs> you don't want it to be a supernova right so Capricorn here wants to be that perfection is again it's an ixion thing here that's happening so we have to dig deep into what we really want for ourselves not because we expect it of other people and with this with the squares that's happening right now at least the very least with you know how we we, we it, it's it's square right here these the action at the very least you have here let's take a look Ah, okay. So we have here Ascendant Square. Follow that line. Ah, Ascendant Square Sun. Ascendant Square Ixion, Pholus, and Core. Okay, so Core is learning to work with your own creativity. It's said to be said, according to Astro.com, has been the higher vibration of Jupiter. But it's creativity with it's creativity with um, spirituality, right? So, in other words, it's it's, it's the way is it's you break free. It's where we allow cosmic and divine creativity to take care of what we ourselves, our ego, can't actually, so, you know. Because and that's where it's telling. It's right away it's telling me it's like oh, so it's telling you to so make decisions, find your bliss, and at the same time trust in the divine. Trust probably also in the divine, in your inner self, because this is going to be in the, the deer. But in general, it's, it's going to be more, it does, it's showing here at the very least in the Greenwich. I'm, I chart, charted this, I drew this up based on uh, the location in England because it's, you know, it's central. It doesn't have to be that way. But I mean, um, it's going to be different everywhere else but the point is that it's still going to be decisions that we have to make towards because if we don't make the right decision it has a butterfly effect it says you know you can have dire consequences or it can very very positive consequences when we are patient when we are listening when we are in the moment when we are not in control but still working towards those little things you know Capricorn's journey is to definitely find its shadow is found in Cancer, in the opposite sign, and it, we need to figure out what it is it that we really want inside. What is it that makes us happy? What is it that makes us safe? Rather than expecting it from other people, it's really figuring out. Oh, okay, then I need to take a, take initiative. It's, it is a cardinal sign, so that means that it takes it takes charge and when it needs to. It needs to it has assertiveness too so people might feel a bit of that assertiveness that comes through um, and it's time to shine in your own way without limiting anything but without also pushing too much you know it's a kind of you really find that balance and again we need to trust the divine and make sure that when we're finding our bliss and the decisions we make towards that it's actually for not only for greater good, but starts from here, right? The sun rules the heart right here. The sun rules this area. It's similar area where Leo rules. Um, of course, it's not the same as Leo, um, but the sun is that. It's um, our creativity. It goes back to being creative. So creativity doesn't necessarily mean that you do art or dance or music or whatever. It's something that you're creating. You're forming something. And it ties right into Capricorn because you're trying to substantiate things. It's very Saturnian. And trying to substantiate things, trying to materialize beauty from the divine. Right? Capricorn has that potential access. You know, it's a Saturnian ruled sign, so Saturn has that limits, but it creates limits because it, it's not sure what's ahead. But you have to trust that you have to learn how to trust that and say but take the time to process that take your time to process do an earthly thing and say okay do what you need to do do what you need to do. but don't be too caught up in the whole i gotta make this all about procedure i gotta be i gotta perfect it it's got to be perfect it's got to be a certain way no there is no one certain way of doing things right when we trust internally you will know what this body is 
you know, it's, it's, it's what you chose to be here for, what the body is going to recognize. So the body with the divine. So in other words, horizontal with the vertical, as Eckhart puts it. So that way, when you package yourself out there, you're not trying to convince others of this. You're not trying to be all pleasant. You know, right here we have ascendant in uh, ascendant in Libra. So people pleasing, right? So you don't want to do that. And its shadow is the opposite, where if you're not pleasing people, then all of a sudden you get aggressive and you want to be in control. We don't want that, right? So we want to be able to say, okay, well, I'll know what I want, and I just go with it, and I create boundaries where it's necessary, okay? So, so there's a square there. The square to the sun, but also square to the deer. So personal, you know, your deeper personal personality, like your uh, sense of internal being you're getting to know yourself a little bit more emotionally what it means for you to what your past has meant for you those kind of things so when that comes in contact with other while you express yourself to the world you don't necessarily have to express everything you don't have to be a people pleaser now going into the square with ascendant to uh, mercury same thing you know your self or form of self-expression doesn't have to be compromised just because people you, you believe that you want people to give you approval, right? So this is a time to kind of process it. Like, okay, well, I don't need anybody's approval, but at the same time, you don't want to be like, fuck you. <laughs> you don't want, you know, so those kind of things. Um, with this conjunct being affected by, down here, we're just being conjunct affected by Mars, we also have... Um, I get that right. We also have Juno there in the twelfth house. Well, that the house doesn't apply here. So Juno or conjunct Orcus. First of all, we have this split. Juno conjunct uh, retrograde Orcus in Virgo means that we want. This is the time to um, be truthful with our own. Um, what we really what specifically our own overall health means to us and what it means to be healthy what it is to why is it that we want to be healthy in the first place what is it that we want to you know what, what do we, what do we work hard for i mean is it really health because we want to live longer we want to survive we want to feel good you know, is it, is it is it egoic or is it actually for the betterment of yourself as part of the grand, the grand scheme of things and the whole scale, everything, everybody and everything and everything in the universe, right? So Orca's question gives you, brings you that. So, and how loyal you are to that? How married are you to your own personal beliefs about what is really true to you? Your own personal integrity, your own ability to, to see, oh, because you know when you took I mean, right here, I mean, specifically just like in the, in the, if we're talking about locations, we're talking about London area or in, in England, that area, um, this energy that we have here with Orcus is in the 12th house, in conjunct, of course, with Juno, it's like a repeated thing that's going to continuously happen and Cork is going to question you, question is, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure, until you're honest about you know, because we want to get away from things that are too, so painful that we, it's not going to work. Orcus is going to find you. Your inner Orcus is going to go, oh, why didn't I? Why didn't I? Okay. So with Juno there, it's trying to you first self figure out what you are going to commit yourself to. Is it going to be committed more towards egoic things or more elevated things? And in the 12th house, it's a lot of that isolation is sort of like that. You need time to reflect and have inner reflections. This is a time when you also discover possibly what your true, real skills are that come from your true connection with the divine. Right? So figuring out those things. And instead of also going into, escaping into drugs and sex and food and 
all these external sort of things that help you figure you want to you know people want to escape I mean, it could be tv as well it could be anything it could be even be things like astrology it could be anything that is the ego wants to escape to because it doesn't ah it's not you know so um and then we also but with that square mercury it's how you communicate and just start to learn about your your own personal um choices that you make towards what you want to commit yourself to and devote yourself to you know how married are you to your own personal beliefs and your own understanding of things you have to learn how to adapt as well right especially because we have the fire thing here going on so there's a there's a sort of one is being technical the other one is um being just all like ah okay i'm just gonna go for it exaggerate as well so you might tend to also feel like you have to exaggerate oh this is what i'm committed to but then you get it wrong and that's okay it's it's, it's, it's an awakening of like to balance between the energies of this earth and fire square just sort of just challenge of figuring out what is honest you know what you really try figuring out like what am i going to what do i personally believe in what is my philosophy and does, does that tie in with what I really want to commit to? So you take the time to really go inside, really go inside by doing things that are, that ground you, and it's in the silence. It really is in the silence. Right? Being raised Catholic, I was like, <laughs> I, I remember this one song. Uh, I forgot what the song was, but it's from a, it's from a song. And it was, I will come to you in the silence. Da, 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 da. I remember that. And that's one thing that caught my attention because it's like, it's accurately true. Because you call it divine, you call it the universe, you call it source, you call it creator, you call it God, whatever. The same source of energy that we are from. So being that, that, that's, that's the creativity we're talking about. That's the connection we're talking about. That's the wholeness we're talking about. So with Orcus here squaring, actually not Mars but rather um, is it yeah it's squaring uh, series so here we also need to figure out I mean Orcus is already we have this ability to figure out what we're really committed to and the real things we're going to do but sometimes we get caught up in this whole like well, I want to be taken care of. I want to be taking. I want someone to please me. I want someone to be my parent. Siri teaches us to be okay with being both. Your inner parent, your inner child. You're um, figuring out what it is that you really, what really, what not, what you know, unconditional love is for you. It's how we express self love. It's unconditional love, acceptance, really. So it's where we go through questioning how nurtured we are and how we can give it. Because if we're not nurtured ourselves, how else do you give it? You can't give unconditionally to something if you don't have it unconditionally to yourself. That's what series teaches us. So instead of looking outwards, again, look in inwards. Okay. Um, I wanted to also tie back into the sun that when the sun is, because it's in Capricorn, at least uh, up to core right here, the stellium right here. It's also affected by Pisces, or at least um, it's affected by Saturn. So Saturn rules this section right here, but it's in Pisces. So it's a lot about questioning and putting limits on what we believe in and what we are idealizing, what is ideal for us, what is... So I guess you could, you, yeah, you can say perfect. All right? So let me look into. Okay. It's going to take a while here because when I do a search, it takes a while on notes. Come on. Uh, here we go. Okay. 
So, you know, sometimes we also put have to put limits on um, being overly giving and what we believe in, meaning like, are we being gullible about it? Are we being pessimistic? You know, both it goes both ways. Putting a limit on... Because when we're to compassion, for example, it's no longer compassion. It's no longer giving. It's no longer creative. It's no longer the whole feel of the Pisces energy. It's no longer that. You have to create limits when it comes to that and say, okay, what is real? Right. So introspection is a good thing where you create limits and say, okay, well, here's my limit. Here's my boundary. And figuring out what we need to do with that. Because otherwise, if it's the opposite direction where we become, instead of being optimistic, we become pessimistic. Instead of becoming emotionally connected, we become emotionally detached and aloof. Also pulling, putting a limit on that one. And But here we have this trying also here connecting to the sun right because it's actually perfect conjunction to the sun and deer so we can draw in this potential especially when we come across people in public or people like relatives or even authority figures specifically people in authority any person in authority we can learn to see that it's like okay well this person has something to tell me we can learn from that but also being in touch with your own personal beliefs and what that means for you. It's like how you interpret that is going to be really up to you. That's all I'm going to say for that because I think I'm going to go further into this. <laughs> okay. So we have that we have that sextile there, so we can draw on that potential. Now we also have here the sun. Um, well, hold on. We have all the way to. We have all the way. From first of all, this is conjunct right here, which is uh, Mars, Mercury, Sun, and the deer. I would say right here, and it's square to Neptune as well. So okay, we might okay being careful not to be too deluded and watching out for what is real in our lives, like what is the experience that we have. You, you can't just shine without. You know, you can shine and have unlimited shininess or being unlimited vitality and all that stuff. But if it's too hot, what happens? And so you have to create limits. So this is where Neptune is telling us to say, if we want it to be fake, if we want it to be, you know, we want to put a veil on it, if we want to escape, if we want to be, um, if you want to really transcend, you're going to have to realize what, I made a post on this where you, do you, do you ascend way too much? Do you escape? Or do you descend and then go into drinking and alcoholism? Or do you transcend all that, you know, 3D, sort of more like um, egoic, you know, uh, perception, that conceptualization? Do we go into that? Or do we transcend that and say, okay, figure out what's real? Okay? So this is the time to also be real about what is it that we really want? what makes us really happy. Again, nothing to do with the outside. Nothing to do with what others think, nothing to do with what you perceive others think, even your past. You have to really work through that. Um, and because... Because... Uh, what is this one? Oh, sorry, not because. I thought I mis misread that. Okay, so this is, sometimes this happens. <laughs> uh, okay. So going back into this, what also influences the sun, the solar position right here, which is decision making with core and all those things, is also the fact that we have uh, Jupiter. Where is Jupiter here? Okay, Jupiter is in retrograde in Taurus right now. So it adds a bit of Earth to that. So a bit more grounded for sure. And because it's retrograde, it is going to put into question how we grow bit by bit by bit by bit especially one it's in retrograde two it's in taurus so take it really slow it's a good thing too that taurus is there in i mean jupiter there is there in taurus and retrograde you know holding down that that tendency to exaggerate especially when you have mars um uh, mercury there's a tendency to exaggerate emotions specifically anger and assertiveness and that whole like 
willpower thing. I gotta push this, I gotta push this, right? Jupiter there is holding the fort down and like really telling us to go, okay. Simmer down. <laughs> Jupiter here in Taurus is, um, is it? No, it's not in any, it's not in, uh, it's not in uh, exaltation or anything. But, okay. You have that placement. Right, so you have that effect of Taurus in there to kind of take things slow, just enjoy the moment. You don't need to always be like all oh, real power. Really, Mars, the way Mars can enjoy the moment is to be curious about things and just let things be as they are. You know, you can you can have this sort of like um push that you need to pull, you know, that, that you need you need to have, but it doesn't have to, it could be a little bit it's gradual pushes, you know, gradual pushes. And it's in the flexible sign, so it's in a transitional sign, like uh, the mutable sign, like it's malleable. So that means it's going to be in a transitionary state. Although here we have Mercury, so people communicating this time will most likely be feeling like they need to communicate exactly what they need to. Anger comes out much easily, especially because it's in the last degrees of uh, Sagittarius, you know, it needs, it's got to learn how to be more patient. And this is why Sagittarius has to learn into how it transitions into that more groundedness of Capricorn. You know, we don't want to exaggerate anything. So finding ways to ground yourself is absolutely important, especially now. The last few, you know, before we get into December, Mars is going to eventually going to get there later on. I don't know, I forgot when. Um, so yeah, um, uh, what else does we have here? Mercury. No, that's Maki Maki right here. Okay, so Maki Maki is actually well square to the sun, the dear end. Uh, as far as Ixion, possibly also Fullness. Yes, on the mid-core. So Makimaki is in, in our internal Makimaki is being able to, is that retrograde? No, it's not retrograde. Being able to discern, because it's in Libra right now, figure out what, we kind of put a logic, there's logic in, in, in this case with Makimaki. But Makimaki is our ability to manifest things, right? But in order to manifest things, it has to trust the divine. We have to trust that what we're getting into isn't like egoic. Okay, it's kind of like Haumea, um, but it's um, a lot to do with uh, the internal compass of creativity. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so it's the, I call it the, this is when we want to manifest in truth, right? through love, compassion, but also action, but also action. You know, you look into the the the, uh, the myth behind it and uh, connected to Easter, East Islands. Um, he was, um, he had this phallic nose and this, how he was portrayed, the way he was depicted in statues was he had no wife. In other words, so celibacy, to me, that personally means like cr personal creativeness. You can be your own. You can, it's sexuality as well. Um, and that ties into the Libra thing where it's like it doesn't have to go one way or the other. It can be neither. neither, Right? So my, literally probably you might come across people who don't identify with any of that stuff. In other words, not necessarily asexual, sexually speaking, but also asexual in the way we perceive things. Asexual in terms of the way we... Uh, what we believe and what makes us happy doesn't go have to go one way or the other. You know, we're trying to run. You know, we're trying to grow out of this duality that of this, this life school on Earth, and many of us are. Um, and it's going to keep going. All right. So trusting your own inner creativity and divinity, and you get blessings. Right. In the uh, Maki Maki in the mythology was uh, associated with bird sex. So for me, that's like blessings from above. We we come from, and our source. He had also large, large eye sockets in the statues, and that, that was the, that was uh, how they depicted Makemake. So it's awakening, being awakened and conscious of your decisions. A phallic nose, 
rep for me represents in the statue. To me, that represents awareness through the senses and creating from us from sensing, intuiting, instincting, and a knowing of direction. You can't really know direction unless you have experience, and that's where the whole like it makes sense right now. You know, Libra also learns from experiences with relationships. It, it kind of you know goes back and forth, and it kind of it's square to this whole placement with Capricorn. That's fine. Because, you know, people might think, oh, Libra is about, happy about indecisiveness with our creativity and all that stuff. But there's a, there's, there's a truth to that. You know, Saturn is actually exalted in Libra. And what that does, it makes our own limitations. We create limitations on things that are not necessarily limitations for the sake of limitation. Sometimes you have to restrict things. Sometimes you be conservative. Sometimes you have to just let loose. So... Um, with that being the case, we have to look into, for me personally, Eris, but also Venus. Right? Where is Venus? Right? Uh, Venus is... Sorry, I lost my... Where is Venus? Okay, right here. <laughs> Venus is in Scorpio, so it has a lot of in-depth, um, intense, sort of investigative, um, really deep, transformative uh, energies that influence the way we trust uh, our, you know that whole like okay we can go back and forth in here but do sometimes eventually we're gonna have to make a decision right but that decision doesn't necessarily mean that we decide right in here and right now we go through trusting how that decision making is going to come through because venus affects that this uh, venus rules libra but we also have to look into eris where's eris right here for me that's eris so Aries, of course, we know is going to be in Aries. It's going to be in Aries for like a long while, and so it does pull pull in both the Scorpio and uh, Aries energy to make a make make our ability to to manifest in truth and what is real manifestation through source and connectedness, and figure out okay. So that way, when we make the decision to manifest, the decision we make to and uh, to process that won't be exaggerated one go one way or the other and just be more it's be completely guided and then we'll eventually find our real bliss because we're guided it's like that's what real bliss is it's the source it's connected bliss right? it's not egoic bliss egoic bliss is always very limited short short-sighted it's just uh, which, which ties into the capricorn thing as well saturn road so limitations it's not the time to be like oh i gotta be my own thing i gotta be strict and like fuck you i don't want that these are the rules they go more no <laughs> right so um what else do we have here? okay so makimak is actually opposite of north node <laughs> but north node is actually uh, for me it's trying still trying to eris right here 22, 24, right here. Or is that... Why is there two there? Interesting. Ah, I made him... Okay. That's twin. Okay, no, it's opposite of, of Chiron, not North Node. Sorry, it's Chiron. That's 15 degrees right here. Right here. It looks like it's North Node, but North Node is actually right here. <laughs> Cheers. So it's opposite of a Chiron. So um, questioning of freedom, people, you know, would be like, well, how do I trust? Uh, how do I trust the divine? I can't. I feel like I can't. You know, I don't have the choice. You know, people question like, I don't have the choice. It's very airy. It's like, and you probably start to go, wow. But this Chiron in retrograde is telling us to the wounds will continue to the lessons will continue to happen until we actually learn them. So we won't necessarily be creating from a from source. We won't be creating from that connectedness. We'll just be creating out of complete ego, and it's root really ties in right here in the first house, at least when it comes to London. Um, so you know what I mean. So it won't be exactly creating from a source. So it's just going to be chaotic. And it's funny because, um, uh, sorry, Eris. Because we're, okay, sorry. No, no. I keep, sometimes I jump. This is part of the things I do. Uh, okay, Chiron. That's okay. And so yeah, so Maki Maki in that case will be affecting our choices in our, you know, that it's, it's our really, really trusting. You, you notice the theme that's going on here? It's really trusting the divine, right? 
but also sometimes taking action when you need to because sometimes you just you, you'll know when you take action it's like your instincts will kick in and your intuition will show you and you're always guided and i'm going to go into the other charts in a bit here what else do i need to do okay so we have i usually look at the red parts here because it's those are more important things that we can learn from i usually i start with the sun and we go into the moon and we see that the moon is actually opposite of series right here just right here the moon is opposite of series and it's time for us to kind of question our own philosophy and what we feel about that because you know it's in gemini so we tend to be analytical about um how we proceed with our emotions and this is going to be moving of course this is the moon it's the fastest moving planet um and it's it's not just sensing it's also going deep into what we actually believe in and what we actually feel is like our basic like not just basic needs like what we really need and how we work through that nurture because it is opposite of the moon um, series it's almost like the moon is going to bring about well i want this one i want this one it's going to be a little bit more childish versus and it's going to come out lilith might start to come out and be like fuck you gentlemen and you start to become more rebellious you start to become more controlling you start to become more um like overly mothery so to speak you know very like it's not nurture anymore so you have to come into contact with your inner nature your own uh in instincts and figure out what is how am i being guided here how is what is sirius trying to tell me right. and again jupiter puts that puts a hold on on series here because it's like it makes it grounded because jupiter rules uh sagittarius so we have to look into jupiter where it is and we go into gemini and we see that gemini is of course ruled by mercury so there's that's why the opposition is there it can make us feel like the emotions we feel are so exaggerated they don't know where to go not only because of the opposition but because of that that coloring of of uh, sagittarius the side mercury rules the moon here so uh, self-expression or the internal form of expression your soul might be exaggerated in certain ways it might not be exactly like pinpointed it might not be specific so Gemini, we have to use that energy of like, well, let's weigh things in. Let's look at the information. Let's do a little bit more talking. Let's not just like close it down, be like conclusive and be dogmatic about it. Right. It's also square Saturn. So that means that there's people might start, people might feel this limitation towards personal belief and your inner sort of like your, your inner child might start to come out and be like, ah, it's the way it's going to be inner instead of being inner childlike, it's going to be inner childish right saturn here is showing us like what do you personally believe in and how do you know who do you believe in what do you believe in you know you don't want to be too gullible and with that in because you know gemini is quite the most flexible zodiac in the sign in the whole you know it's very communicative it's all so we need to kind of weigh things in but at the same time kind of balance between faith and intellect figuring out what it is that we personally like what feeds us what feeds our soul but at the same time if that what feeds our soul is in one way or the other it's not going to be balanced not going to be whole and let's take a look going into saturn itself we see that neptune rules saturn so in terms of like because this is very it's a christmas time it's very saturnian you know technically we could be focusing more on saturn here because it is that um but it is ruled by pisces and jupiter so you have uh, sorry we, it's ruled by neptune and jupiter uh with jupiter there trining saturn we are key, we, can, we can use this energy this potential to figuring out what how we go about um that drive towards 
expansion, how we grow in terms of like its limitations, even when we come across authority figures and governments and traditions and old people possibly, <laughs> you know, and figuring out, okay, how can we take this? How can we go about this so that it's not dogmatic, it's not like stubborn, it's not, you know, because Pisces, Neptune tries to show us it's like it might be you might be deluded into thinking this is one way or the other that it has to be a certain way but it's really not really discerning being discerning okay and we talked about that earlier about discernment and discernment comes through Orcus right and it's funny okay is it connected is there a connection um no there isn't not yet I don't see a connection here so but because again, we're, it's just it's a very so it's a very Saturnian holiday, um, you know Saturnalia, right? You know about this holiday. For people who don't, Saturnalia was the original pagan tradition of what Christmas was about: is gift giving, working with harvest. I guess it's represented by the cornucopia. I think that's very Saturn as well. So when you work hard and work towards things that are, you know, things that you want to accomplish. And that's what Saturn represents. We also have square here, Saturn square Venus, um, which influences um, our choices that we make when it comes to relationships, not necessarily relationships with others, but relationship with ourselves and putting a kind of a pause to that. It might feel like people don't understand. Relationships might feel a little bit awkward. There's fear in connecting with other people especially because it's in one is in the sign of uh, Pisces even though they're both in water signs it's kind of funny and Venus is in Scorpio right now so it's in it's in detriment it's in its fall because it's uh, oh no it's detriment no it's it's, it's in its detriment because the op it's, Venus is at home with Taurus and funny because <laughs> that this is where the funny part comes in Venus opposes uh, Uranus right now. So Uranus in retrograde is that whole I'm not certain of the changes. It's going to be kind of repeat things that are going to be uncertainty. Things are unstable. Insensibilities might come through again and again and again until we learn how to work with that energy of instability and unpredictability and impermanence really, right? And impermanence with relationships, impermanence with self-worth, impermanence with what we value, what we feel good about, what we enjoy, and with that also squaring here, we also have a. Oh, we don't have that. Okay, well, I thought it was going to be a grand uh, T square, but there isn't a T square according to astro.com. So there is that pull from Venus to these two planets. So Venus is going like, well, you need to kind of balance things. You know, and figuring out what, when to be stable, when to be unstable, and working with those energies. It's like, okay, so it's all about timing in this case. And Venus is pulling at the two planets and saying, okay, I, it's time to uh, evaluate this. You know, because this is a lot about Venus's when estimations, valuations. That's also Venus. Um, and figuring out how it, and that way we can figure out what it is that we're what really really enjoy being in Scorpio we very investigative my people might start to feel like they need to go deep into things and figure out hmm is that the right one is this the right one and you kind of do it kind of like in the dark that's totally fine too but we also have Uranus here going back to Uranus actually let's go back because Pluto rules Scorpio Pluto is actually Pluto rules Venus right there Oops. Pluto rules Venus through, uh, through Capricorn, so more grounded, more stable, more, and it's in Pluto is in the last degrees of, <laughs> of Capricorn, as we already probably have heard so many times now. Um, that so there's this tension that we might feel with Pluto, this uh, tension to really starting to rot things away, but making things also real, right? With it being in Capricorn. It, gives an earthy feel to it but it's a softer feel remember we talked about the deacons I believe this applies also to the other planets beside the Sun when we have Pluto here in the last degrees and it's the last deacon of uh, you know so that's in Mercury 
it's a very more communicative towards Aquarius, right? Makes more makes real sense that communications will be a little bit more start to open up instead of just being like uh, I'm gonna close in, I'm not gonna trust you, I'm gonna, uh, all that stuff that's like you know self victimization, poor trauma me kind of thing. It's time to get out of those things and kind of really work with that trauma instead of sitting down and being stuck with it. And you know Venus is approaching the last degrees, closing and closing into the last degrees of Scorpio. So that's gonna we're gonna start to feel that energy as well, whilst it actually goes away from the opposition to Uranus, which means that this unstable energy to the, the awakening energy of Uranus is going to kind of start to let go and be like, okay, now you're going to be on your own. But now, but Pluto is going to be there. <laughs> Pluto is going to be like, okay. If you need to get sick, if you need to get, if you need to, the things that you need to get rid of, things that you need to get uh, to die away from, you know, death and rebirth, that's really much, that's really Pluto, but also power struggles. And we can work with that energy because we have a sextile here. When we come across relationships that are like, you know, um, uh, not only traumatic, but people who are narcissistic, sociopathic, uh, psychopathic, Machiavelli. There's another one. I totally forgot what those are. But the point is that when people, when you sense, sense that energy, there might be a sense of like, okay, it is instinctive because it's in Pluto. I mean, it's in, uh, it's in, uh, it's in Scorpio. But with the Pluto, with Pluto being in Capricorn, the last degrees, it's going to give us a bit more groundedness, but at the same time, more instinct connected to i would say material the material world meaning through senses we might start to feel that very because it's closing into aquarius so it's like a feel of that uranus ruled sign that whole vibrations might start to come through and we start to feel through our bodies and this is also part of venus as well right it might be start to feel like okay people I can sense when it's okay there's something not right with this so you create boundaries when you need to and that's Capricorn right there create boundaries where you need to it's trying to get rid of the old that doesn't work into something that's new so that doesn't mean that everything is going to be completely like overhauled it's not to do it's nothing to do with that but it's more about that whole shift to a different paradigm by creating what's necessary so if you need to create that boundary go ahead create that boundary Go with that Saturn energy. If you need to get rid of things and go into the new world, into a new world in yourself and a new world, then yes, do that. So keep what needs to be kept, throw away what needs to be thrown away. With Saturn, oh, sorry, with Uranus still pulling at Venus and Pallas Athena in, in Scorpio, we also going to heal, at least for this day or tomorrow. You might notice that uh, I don't know people are probably seeing that it, the there's an instability between who to trust and the wisdom we get from that and figuring out what how can I trust the divine how can I go beyond because um, Pallas Athena as I kind of mentioned in other videos is creative thinking but it's a little bit more logical it's a little bit more like. Libra in a way but it's like aggressive kind of Libra I don't know how to explain this one but there's a lot of information I want to go through I don't want to go through all of them but basically it's just like Machim, just like Orcus um, Pallas Athena is also discernment she's like the equivalent of Chiron as well it's kind of almost transitional between creativity and I think intellect right goddess of goddess of wisdom goddess of uh, weaving so that everything is connected when we process things when we learn to cooperate and we see the link between everything and we have an effect it's almost like Ixion as well oh, sorry Pholus you know again Chiron it's this very centaur thing centaurs represent transitions but there's a connection between one thing to the other right so Pallas Athena we have to be really discerning we have to be more conscious about what we decide with working with this energy and figuring out okay so that way we can we can remain awake but at the same but not scared and therefore we can learn to relate more with who we relate more with specifically our own selves and go deep into that as well so the last thing i want to talk about here is the fact that we have so many planets there's like a sort of a back and forth sort of a 
uh, an eight sort of thing going on here. You have this thing going <laughs> right here with this section here. We have um, so the sun. We have Mercury Sun conjunct all the way to core opposite of the um, opposite of mid heaven. So that means again making decisions so that we're not caught up in the the you know the the I guess you can say what people might consider what we need to, you know that, that feels like maybe because midheaven cancer um probably feel like the you know society wants to mother us side society wants to be more traditional probably want to go back into figuring out but we also have to put in boundaries be like and be like okay well i i don't know if that's my bliss i don't know i just want to be present i don't necessarily want to be in the past meaning like people might hold on to nostalgic things society might feel like people want to go back to the way they were but it's like well can we so we kind of figure have to figure out what is it in the past that we have to look back into and not let the social opinions and you know the opinions of others affect our own personal choices and the choices we make to find our own personal bliss and how we communicate that with others without exploding. Likewise, um, trusting in the devotion, devotional abilities that we have to commit to, it's in Red Vestas in Retrograde here, so that means that, uh, what is it actually? Let's take a look. Runner in two. Okay, so Vesta is opposite of just specifically up to Ixion, up here, right here. So, okay. So, we might feel kind of, in a way, uncertain about, and you feel kind of like there's a certain violation, it can necessarily, not necessarily violate, but could be, of the public or the personal opinions of the public. Vesta is in the last degrees of Gemini, but it's actually conjunct in midheaven, so that means it's affecting more of the tenth house in this case, or affecting midheaven, not necessarily the house. So that means that a Vesta is influencing what we need to work, what we need to devote ourselves to so that we can awaken. It's Kundalini energy as well. Um, and things might start to continuously repeat until we have these awakening moments of like, oh, particularly with the mind because it's in the it's in Gemini but it's in the last degrees of Gemini so that means like people's thoughts are starting to be more awakened it's a kundalini energy up to the brain right here um, also it's also physically speaking that it affects um, people's like what we do with our hands what we do with our this area right here in the body so people might start to feel like they need to do something with the the information we get, the downloads we get, right? But here with the opposition to Ixion, it's an opposition to the Sun and Mercury and also the, the deer, it feels like, hold on for a second, before you go out and tell people what you're downloading, be care, you know, be mindful of who you reveal that to, so that it's not exactly, for those who you feel are ready, those who you get reveal it too, you get you get the sense of it as well. With uh, Vesta retrograde and Mercury, it's more of like an internal processing rather than anything. So in Kundalini, it might be a more of a personal experience, awakening of your personal experience. Specifically with the mind, we start to become more, you know, come in contact with this, the third eye. Um, and because Mercury rules Gemini, Mercury is going to be affecting this one. So there might be a tendency to exaggerate. It's in Mercury right now. It's still in Sagittarius. So it's it, it's might maybe there's might be a feeling of an internal exaggeration of like um, I don't know if I'm awakening. I don't know if I'm going to be part of this whole awakening process. I don't know if the goddess in me, that inner fire, will work. I don't know if it, there's a questioning, there's a questioning, but we still devote ourselves to that in the first place because we continue to things that give us that inner fire. So with the inner fire being there, um, because uh, Vesta does tie into Virgo, so it's going to affect Orcus as well. 
and Juno here. So we need to figure out what it is that we're devoting ourselves to so that it's not exactly it's it's aligned basically you know and we have Vesta actually square both midheaven and Vesta are squaring ascendant so that means that what we we need to find a balance between what even though what other people think of us might be true that you know it's like the opinions towards going back in traditions and rather and then being more open towards balancing things it's in Libra right now the ascendant we need to figure out what it is that it's true for us personally and how we portray that to the world and how we package ourselves and what we try to embody versus opinions that may or may not coincide with those things Venus rules the ascendant right now and so definitely like deep internal researching of like embodying of yourself and figuring out what you personally really want to show the world not necessarily for them or anything at all but for yourself and saying okay well this is me right meaning me as in like the divine me connected so that it's, it's not me 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 I'm ego fuck you kind of like no I mean like really really going deep into that one so there's that chart <laughs> I have said a lot there I didn't mention anything really thing anything much about Eris here but if you looked at Pluto right here Pluto is the last degrees of Capricorn of course but Eris and Jupiter are there it's pulling at Eris it's putting at Eris and Jupiter and the North Node as well actually no just Eris at least when it comes to this one because it's five degrees orb to Eris and seven degrees orb square to the north node I would say that still counts but focusing on errors social inclusion um, equality you know figure out because the way I've seen Eris is again she's the one who says are you sure about that I told you so she's the kind of like uh, I told you so kind of energy it's like you need to figure out what it is that um, true for you personally so awaking to personal collective or wholeness reality understanding of true power and choices right to include revaluation as well and to to expose so once you're exposing yourself to reality of your own personal choices to go deep and really figure out what is true power and how you expand through that slowly gradually and what needs to be discarded and just like and what needs to be brought into your new self so that when you feel included it's not because I want to be included because you don't include me it's not out of resentment it's not you know it's like you worked with your shadow it's time to really work with your shadow I would say Eris and all these planets the plutonian ones are showing us to the, the further planets out there are showing us to work with our shadow Jupiter here is also square Varuna so we have to be able to understand what cosmic law is for us and um, there's something else I discovered about Varuna because it's not just law and order it's not just whole like to me I discovered this means this means absolution so balance you know the egoic beliefs about law and order but there's something else about Varuna Mm. D to pass pass power. So okay, so being figuring out what your competency is according to uh, Philip Sedgwick, mastery of all tasks, the things that you need to work in without force, re regulating without force. So it could be that um, anything to do with any sort of appointments or. Uh, agreements or you know sort of like uh, sort of a, a meeting with other people I wouldn't say meeting but um, um, it, it's because uh, when we blame others for our lack of inabilities or incompetence we feel like they're the ones responsible for the choices that we make but that's not true right Varuna is this sort of like we need to trust that there's a way to go about things very naturally and there's a universal law that keeps us 
on our feet, but sometimes off our feet as well. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, again, this is it's being self-sovereign, right? Figuring out what sovereign is, because if we let authority just take over without a specific like understanding of what that is, because sometimes we also need to trust that sometimes authority does play a role, but we have to be conscious about that. It is right now, it's in Leo, so we have to be untrusting that angelic guidance, the, the guidance from the heavens. And retrograde is repeating itself, so we kind of question like, ah, how do I grow into this? We have Jupiter here. How do, we, how do I know who to trust and how do I have faith in that? And we kind of question that. Both are retrograde planets right now, so it's like, I don't know where to go, but when we trust in the divine, when we're connected, when that's when we know, oh, okay, so there is this, okay, who do I believe, who do I trust, what, is there an organization that still works, is, does it have to be organized, does it have to be religion, does it have to be this, does it have to be a coven, does it have to be groups, does it have to be anything that has to do with, you know, um, well, faith, really. Um, because we have here Leo, but we also have Jupiter here. So it's a lot of that whole, like, but faith in yourself. It's really more about accomplishing things for yourself with Verona there and sort of doing things gradually for yourself that are more sensible and using the 3D world, using material and physical worlds and concepts to help you along the way without, without you know, being dependent on them. You know, there's a tendency for codependence and a fear of change as well in this case. Both signs are kind of afraid of change, um, Taurus and Leo. And so we have to work with the shadow as well in this case because we need to understand it's like, oh, okay. You know, shadow really works, it really goes deep into that, does these kind of things. Um, going back to Saturn because it is a Saturn themed holiday. Sedna. Now, Sedna is quite out there. I believe that Sedna is just more than just this whole planet of, uh, what is it, uh, being forgiving, also discerning as well, clarity of perception, recognition of free will and choice, responsible, conscious of consequence, Dharma oriented, um, but also the, f what else did I write here? I'm still reading a book on Sedna, actually. I better just do a search here. Okay. So, destiny and cycles keep going. Um, your soul's growth, you know, when, you, when things are mm, kind of off track. You need to go back into track, be to be on track again by figuring out. It's something to do with karma, feeling like you are out of place and out of time as well. So it's I would see it's like a, it says here it's had to be in a higher octave of series. So your own inner nurturing, but it's like nurture that is absolutely trusting, but without giving away what doesn't need to be given away. So urge to relinquish, that's what I saw here. So willingness to be open, or we have to let go of egoic beliefs about communal nature, nurture, and responsibility, responsibility, natural destiny, so awaken trust. So this is a higher form of really trusting your inner nature, your inner nurture, your inner mother, your inner, it's worth further than that. So it's funny how it's like actually coming towards it's going to be in conjunction with the moon okay it was in conjunction with the moon uh, a few days ago but with it both the moon being up uh, squared saturn is there a t square there no there's no t square okay um it's reminding us to create limitations for what it is that the egoic beliefs of nurturing, meaning like is nurturing just feeding yourself candy all day and drinking and you know <laughs> all those things that are very earthly or is it more about coming to terms with just being in the moment and trusting 
in the divine in its guidance order. So again, the whole theme of this whole thing is basically the same thing. It's really being connected. If you've already noticed this, it's all the same thing. It's always being connected. Um, I kind of wanted to go into the other charts here. Let's see if we can find this one. It's going to be a long video because I wanted to go really deep into this one. Merry Christmas! Mm. No, that's not the one. Here we go. So it's going to be a little shorter because, well, this second chart is going to be a little shorter. I think you can see that. Okay, so I've taken away the other asteroids, but we see here. So we're going to go with we're going to go with Saturn here because it is focused on Saturn. And as I do this again, ah, uh, here we go. Okay. So Saturn, again, of course, we know it's Pisces, and it is square. We already talked about that, and it's square to moon, so there's nothing to that. The little things I'm going to add here is that, okay, then we have to go back into the sun right here, because Horus, Anubis, and Delphi are in conjunction, closer conjunction than it is to Psyche, but Psyche is the sole connection to others, sole connection in this case to ourselves and what it means for us, and closing into the nadir is really working with our inner relationship with ourselves like what is our soul connection what does it mean for us you know and if we were to look into both charts uh soul connection between let me go back to the other chart here and see so psyche 29 degrees source oh there's not even mm, looking at both charts actually No, I was going to go back into hor horse, uh, sorry, orcas here, but there isn't one. So, but for now, we're going to focus on the fact that you have all these planets conjunct each other. Literally, the psyche all the way to Anubis. So, Anubis, if you know this one, is transitions from things that we have to release in death. And this kind of ties in, this right there. It's, you don't see it here, but it's conjunct Pholus as well, because uh, Core as well, because Core was in 8 degrees, Capricorn. Anubis is in 6, but Pholus is in 7, Ixion is 4, Horus is... So it's all kind of tying in. The decision-making process we need to make in terms of finding our bliss and what works for us, but at the same time honing in with that inner warrior. Horus is like your inner warrior. Horus is also your psychic abilities and also intuitive abilities. It's Horus represents the clairs, the five clairs. So it's this ability to really sense what's going on. And with Cap in being it in Capricorn, it's like this whole, we're connected to matter, so we get a lot of senses through our vibration. A lot of it's probably going to be uh, revolving around at least the more physical Claire, which is Claire Shins. Or Claire, I, don't know. I have that one where it's like I'm very sensitive to vibrations. And knowing when to really get rid of things that don't work for us you know inner probably inner dying inner processing it's very plutonian as well there's something else about anubis that i did not put in here but i am going to look for it here so anubis personal rebirth okay to process loss where we adopt to the fruits of loss oh, okay it's hard to kind of see it that way when you have loss we think of it as like we don't know what to work with when it comes to loss it's like you know we start to become sorry for ourselves and we go into this energy of like you know it's a pity party for ourselves and it's understandable you know people are still going through that because they don't know what to do um but this is why now people are actually engaging that we remember we talked earlier about um with uh vesta being in the last degrees of Gemini, it's in retrograde, so it's really revealing a lot of inner knowledge when we're especially when we're downloaded, when we're connecting to our inner selves. The Kundalini process happens a lot more, it's just strong energies coming through. Um, but we're going to go back into okay, sorry, um, Delphi is um, our in Delphine, sorry visionary guess so the oracle psychic power so it ties in a lot with horus here 
um, unveiling the truth where we know, we just know. So Delphine is that energy of we just know in our truth. Tie that with Anubis and tie that with Horus. It's kind of like this rebirth of like, uh, it's like it's sort of like the fire coming through, right? And again, that ties back into its opposition to um, what the world thinks and going back into the past and figuring out what's, it's like, uh, we need to figure out like, we need to go back into the past. We need to go back to the way it was. Well, is it? Or do we just take things from the past that makes sense? Like past life stuff. This is getting more popular now. I noticed people are going into past lives and figure out how that life becomes a past life, how that helps them in the present and in the future. I'm very Aquarian, actually, right? instead of just getting stuck in the past. We also have here actually a grand trine. Okay, we have a grand trine here several signs actually grand trines through the angular houses actually specifically focusing on each angular house so that means that how we work with ourselves and how we relate with another person in the public has to coincide with you know has to we have to find the energies and trying to and we're currently being awakened to see ah okay now i have to balance things and kind of put things together what makes sense for others doesn't necessarily make, make sense for me. But what also makes sense for me not, may not necessarily make sense for others. It's kind of an individual sort of thing, but at the same time, it's a un, it's it's a unified thing. It's the one thing. You know, uh, you know, if you've heard of the fixed, uh, if you've heard of the fixed star stuff with aliens, you know, I mean, aliens are past lives are all, or we're, we're galactic family. There are some many of them that believe in the cosmic law of one. One doesn't necessarily mean you're by yourself. There was an episode from um, Charmed a long time ago. You know, they they misunderstood the sisters misunderstood the Prue was just oh the law the power of one meaning like her. No, it means unified, but it also means individuality. So it's like a cell that I mentioned before. It's like your cell. You are like a cell in this whole body, this soul system. Unique purpose, you know, but with connected always to the bigger picture. Okay? With Psyche there, the soul connection is the first thing that come that, that I've discovered about Psyche. But let's see what else I have here with Psyche. Did I include Psyche here? No, I didn't include Psyche here. So it definitely had a lot to do with soul connection. Um, but I want to go deep into that one. Because I didn't really go into this. Okay, so Psyche is door to the, well, door to this, art. okay, of the soul, okay. Profound emotional connections, intense love experience, soulful bonds, okay. Okay, well, it, it's basically, <laughs> it ties in the same thing. So here we have the decision making we need to, the choices we need to make so that it coincides with the, you know, it's really connected. Let's close this one here. We do have here Heracles. So people might question their choices that they need to make so that they're more in tune with their psyche because relationship seems to be like you know people that you meet might question you and then might question your own uh, ability to hold fast to what you believe in or rather what needs to be what needs well i would say need but what what makes you shine because you, you have this connection right here all these i'm just gonna be a little bit more general here because we have here so many planets con, you know squaring we have here grand a t square and it's on its own but there's then there's the other t square in the southern hemisphere yes that's not the northern hemisphere that's the southern hemisphere so um in astrology so this whole thing right here is showing us that we come across relationships or people particularly who um, you, you might be a little too quick to have an opinion, you know, because this is right here, it's, it's Pisces, but, and, and, you know, when we start to believe in those relationships, we start to kind of feel like, okay, and people who are probably a little aggressive or people who are too assertive and quick to say, you know, these are, vertex is destined 
uh, connections. So people you normally come across that are that can be in the moment as well, it can be childlike, you know, but at the same time kind of also possibly like they just don't want to be told what to do or they don't want to listen to reason. You know, it's the opposite of it's the opposite of Libra. So when you project yourself out to the world as this kind of a logical person, people people might kind of just like, oh, that's not what it is. So it connected with like destined people might feel like they're this is this why do I keep meeting people like this? Why do I keep meeting people who like want just tell me what to do? Like, you know, people who are in control. Likewise, um that squares, you know, relationship with the public and how um you know you might pe keep meeting people who are like um telling you to hold back, telling you to go back into the way it was, telling you to uh and but at the same time it's the opposite where it's just like you tell people that you shouldn't hold back so there's this like back and forth a sort of ping pong sort of fighting sort of battle thing that's happening between the public yourself and your relationship and your inner self as well and there's this like real like this literally like this you see that right here and right here and then there's a, that square right outside of it so right there it's like me versus you versus us versus them is a, so this is a time to really come together and figuring out what is unique for all of us and what is unique for the individual as well however there's an there's a there's a there's an opportunity to go beyond that we have here angel and charoclo healing charoclo is healing um with angel within retrograde um, we might feel like a sort of a block with guidance, particularly uh, with our own personal development, our own your, your own selves, because it's in Leo, our own childlikeness, our own uh, ability to just be in the moment and just be creative and just joyful because we get too analytical and we get too technical and we get too scientific about the whole thing and we get too probably like, oh, this is the science behind all that, this is the science behind this. It's almost like, but instead we need to work with the two energies of Leo and Aquarius here where we need to balance. Okay, so there's that science behind it, but is that all? No, it's not. You have to balance the science and the spirituality as well, with the whole thing. So the healing comes through being able to work with those energies and then channel when you know because it's always there anyways it's always there and then using science as a way to reveal that instead of relying on the tools and be like oh this is the tool this is who i am I'm like you are not the tool your body is not the tool it means that your your tool is a tool it's not a, it's not who you are your real essence is your essence your source it comes from source Prometheus is also here with relationships. When it comes to relationships, Prometheus is, gives you insight and foresight into being able to see and figure out, oh, okay. So working again with the Uranus energy and keeping us awake and be like, ah, oh, okay. Be careful, you know, be caught. I mean, not really be careful, be fearful, but more like be putting up boundaries when necessary and saying, okay, no, that's not what it is. So when you get relationship also even relationship with yourself and what it means for you how do you relate with yourself how do you find your self-worth what is sensual for you and your real sensuality is not about looking for the sensuality like the touching stuff like of others it's more about yourself your self-worth right so and going really deep into that and figure out what is this that uranus is trying to show us that keeping us awake physically awake because you know Venus here rules Uranus because Venus is rule, the ruling sign of Taurus right here and it rules Tor uh, Uranus, Uranus right now so wherever Venus is going to be that's going to affect where Uranus is going to be um, I didn't notice that Mars is opposite of the moon okay so that means a lot of emotional imbalance like anger people might start to feel like they need to express themselves a lot more, be exaggerated about it, whilst also being 
overly technical. So there's an imbalance between Gemini and uh, Sagittarius here, where it's like it's overly technical, but it could be like overly exaggerated technical or too technical of the of our own exaggeration. So it's like we really have to balance that energy and figure out, okay, how do we embrace philosophy, our own personal beliefs, our own beliefs and faith in what we in our own spirituality with the technicalities of things it kind of just ties in a lot with this leo angel you know opposition to uh to Chericlo here right and uranus because uranus rules uh aquarius it's going to affect Chericlo and be more grounded in that technical stuff and we really need to understand it's like okay well grounded science but at the same time patient you know not stubborn patient and the sun rules leo so it's the sun wherever you find your bliss right here once you focus on that being able to make this right decision so ixion was here as well and really listen to that intuition honing all that intuition and really this is part of grounding it's not just like it's not escaping it's grounding and figuring out how to connect being in the silence this retrograde angel thing will come out and you're just like oh i get the senses okay so this is the thing that's happening right now um new beginnings with right with the north node societal co collective north node in aries is to figure out where we're headed into the new world or things that are new it could be things simple things like new world things like uh, your own new self figuring out discovering like oh I, you know and being curious about it being in the moment eos represents new beginnings of the physical right here but it necessarily means it doesn't necessarily mean it's the first half but it does represent new beginnings so new beginnings new relationships because it's in libra right here so eos represents that you know being open to new possibilities and figuring out you know maybe sometimes uh things that in the past are meant to be kept and some things are meant to be thrown away so it's very much common there's a common theme and this sort of motif that's happening through the whole well, this whole thing you notice that right <laughs> so going finally into the other chart i'm going to open up that one let me show you it's about the four stars and the four galactic points uh, right here so i'm gonna have to do this one again block and zero and thicken 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 okay here we go oh, here we go test it okay good so we have here galactic oh, okay <laughs> So we have here the galactic center right here. There's two actually. There's galactic center, 27 degrees. Wow, smack in the middle of Mercury. So a lot of thoughts being processed with uh, a lot of a lot of things that are being revealed in the background with knowledge and the, the philosophy of, behind the whole thing because it is in Sagittarius. We have the super galactic. We have the galactic center and the. Uh, I think this is the. Let me double check here. What is that? So there's two galactic centers here. So either way, it's galactic center. <laughs> so it's a cluster where we did. Um, it's the earliest one of the lower vibration of the other four, the other three uh, clusters. So black holes, really. Mm. and it's revealing to us like things that are coming forward and as philip sedgwick i'm just going to quote philip sedgwick here galactic center so he said these are insights found for everyday things and so now focus on point in time in the zone coming back with a new idea people reacting as if their previous thoughts were flawed but when shown a different way um because it is uh i would say um is it actually opposites why is it showing 27 okay 
I think it's actually opposite. Oh, that's Mars. Oh, yeah, that was Mars. Um, okay, let me let me continue. So inclusion shows a different way. Inclusion, possibilities, openness, but they won't realize it. Till, okay, so people might, this is apparently the time when people get new ideas and new downloads, like really like beyond and higher dimensions that people, and then all of a sudden you want to share this. You want to kind of like, you know, you want to prove, you may prove, you want to show it to others is like, ah, this is what, you know, I, I'm showing you, but then people don't get it. But then later they will. Because, you know, the thing about black holes apparently is that, you know, when you, apparently when you shed a light on a black hole, it, the light just gets sucked in, but it's actually behind. Meaning it's actually part of that, right? So I, I believe black holes are like, I think they're dead suns or something like that. I'm not really sure about the science behind it. I'll get into that later. Um, not today, but another time. But, you know, so something that's hidden, basically. So these 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 clusters are really trying to uh, show us that what we know doesn't matter. So nothing is permanent. Universal cleansing towards consciousness at an individual and collective level. So forget what you know. <laughs> That's basically what it is. We think we know something, but it's not. Okay. Um, something else here about the black holes I put, put, I wrote down. So in the early signs, so equinox, I don't know what that means. Oh, the, um, I'm not sure what that means. Early signs, equinox, isn't that fall? Anyways. Something about it's up for grabs. Let's skip that one. So the point is that there's something being revealed to us and and we just kind of, it's almost, we really don't have control over it because it's really like, it's there. And it's square, not only ascendant. Do we also have a square? Yeah, we do have, <laughs> we have a grand square here. Uh, right here. You see that? Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, we have that grand square there. So, but it's also uh, soup, the the it's also uh, it's square to the great attractor. So because it's square to the great attractor, um, I don't know how to really interpret this, but something to do with he said that it's a monumental consciousness movement. It's the energy, just the energy that can change everything. It's what we're meant to do with the current incarnation. Okay. So demonstrating consciousness absorbed to everything you do, whether or not people emulate you, changing the... So it's similar to the Galactic Center where you have these downloads and you know there's an idea you want to share, but then um, people don't believe you. Um, but eventually people are going to realize that. And at first it's not going to make sense because it's like, ah, uh, right? Especially with the Super Galactic Center there too, something to do because it's in Libra. Both of them are actually in Libra. So, um, it's, it's, it's really opening up, uh, this idea of like, what is, what is real for us? Like internalized or personalized attraction, soulmates, um, uh, it's your relationship with your ego and your soul, right? I'm just going to stop there with that one. And then we have... Shapley attractor. This is the one that's the big, that's the higher vibration of the other three. It's when you're not afraid um, of your passion and soul because it is in Scorpio here, right? So that means that you know things are forced behind the scenes. Um, you can't really know what's there until you basically it basically it'll be revealed to you somehow again it's a hidden thing what's behind the scenes it's unconscious um and something that's you know deep within so if you look deep inside so so truly really, that's what transcendence is you go to the next level and you release these false attachments so you know it's complete liberation um with that opposite of sagittarius of the sorry um Sagittarius of uh, of Jupiter, it's like people question that and they don't know whether to really let go because they're kind of held on to this or maybe dogmatic views 
right? So be careful of those dogmatic views that you might have and you just keep repeating because it's like you don't know what to believe in. It's okay. Eventually it will be revealed to you. Then we have the four royal stars. Regulus um, is in zero degrees Virgo. It's actually uh, opposite of Fomalhaut. Um And then we have Aldebaran, which is opposite of Antares. So these are the four angelic. As you can see, they're kind of all opposite each other. One is a little bit harder. One is uh, Aldebaran. Let me let me put some uh, get some information on that one. First of all, let's go to Regulus actually. So Regulus is sorry. I'm gonna close these other two. Okay, so Regulus is okay. It was in Leo, but now it's in Virgo. This is your degrees Virgo, so the early degrees of Virgo. Let's take a look what it means. Okay, so quality is similar to those of Mars and Jupiter, in indicating greater pride, grandly liberal, domineering, cosmopolitan attitudes, in part destructiveness, short level. Okay, so very much like the regulus thing. It's like the word regul, regul, regus, I don't know, regis, regis. It's like the royalty, right? So basically you know where you leave your mark and stage you're being guided towards i would believe like some sort of inner strength and power and being able to figure out what it means for you to embrace that inner power through being childlike you know regulus is regulus is uh let me see here body of the line so you royalty right so um, okay so again very much like a Leo sort of thing but they said Mars Jupiter right if you looked into the they represent the Archangels basically the four royal star represent Archangels so Regulus is in the north Antares is in the west. Uh, sorry, Fomalhaut is in the south. That's Gabriel. Raphael, that's Regulus, is Raphael. Uh, Antares, uh, sorry, south is Gabriel, Fomalhaut, which is actually right here. It's actually opposite of Fomalhaut. So Gabriel is about information, providing information, providing something to do with the mind. Regulus is the opposite of that. It's, it kind of ties in with the Leo energy and Pomaha ties in with the Aquarian energy as well. So I feel like that's what it is. And Taurus is of the West and Aldebaran is of the East. So Okay, so we need to be conscious. It's about balancing your inner sovereignty, your inner, you know, royalty, and all that stuff, with your inner. Ah, your idealism, your ability to charm others. It's Venus, Mercury, refinement, genteel, clever, but. Um, it depends it could be it could be that you become too passive and become like a doormat and um, you can be you know it can be this is this this is the sign that this is what's given being given to us between the angels is like what is telling us to be more conscious of our own inner sovereignty and then the other one is being conscious of like being also be being flexible and also loving towards others from my heart is um, is Gabriel right so Gabriel and uh, was it other? sorry Gabriel and Raphael are telling us to remind us to the balance those two energies together and say okay we need to be kinder to ourselves but at the same time create boundaries where necessary being in shining on the opposite side of the spectrum you have Antares and Aldebaran so with um, Aldebaran Aldebaran is this star or is, you know, Archangel Michael 
that protects us, right? It's a link to Zeus, okay. Okay, Mars-like. Okay, it helps us protect us from arrogance and foolishness. Um, basically, for those people who are religious, they know under they understand what Saint Michael represents or Archangel Michael. Integrity, prosperity, for propensity for okay. Uh, sorry, uh, integrity, passion, eloquence. Be careful of the aggressiveness of this this energy, of course. But you are being guided all the time. Or the opposite of that is Antares. Antares is uh, Uriel. Antares is Uriel. Okay. So it's a, in this case, this is about one is about um, domineering points. Um, the other one is both of them are something to do with losses, something to do with things that you know, arrogance, pride something to do with losses, something to do with um, mm, caution, okay, I just read that here. So either way you're being guided towards that and being more cautious about how your thoughts are going to proceed. It is conjunct the moon here, so being conscious conscious about your emotions and what how that feels for you. What that and then opposite of that in Antares is Antares is actually technically conjunct the Mars here. Not really. It's conjunct super galactic uh, it's conjunct galactic center here. So the point is that when we listen, when we go inwards and we go through our just season of this, these holidays, it's not just like waiting for the holidays to come around for you to be in contact or you in touch with your inner guides, your inner selves, and really being connected to your higher self and source, but it's really every day. And it's not every day because it's, oh, this is a date, this is a date, this is a date. But it's more about really just, it's really just connecting, you know, but you can't really connect until we're in the moment and stillness. And that's really where it's coming down to. You can't really hear and hear and hear unless we're in the stillness. Okay? When you're talking to someone, are you hearing them or are you listening to them? There's a difference, right? So so I hope this helps. This gives you a bit of um, an insight into what the possibilities are, at least for today, and astrologically speaking at least, and working with those energies. There's more to be discovered because you know it's a, it's a little, it's very informational but it's more, it's figuring out what it all means to you by looking inwards. So always try to find yourself in the moment, whatever that may be. It could be, for me, it is the cold showers, and it's, uh, it helps me to, it has helped me to be more meditative in being the moment. And just be grounded through that. You could try it, give it a try. Look up Wim Hof Method. Do the method itself. It's very simple. There's a breathing, and then there's a shower. That's it. Make it a practice. Get used to working with the physical and training the physical again to deal with the traumatic feelings of the cold so that way the brain subconscious recognizes it eventually physically because if we just go through it mentally like through simple shadow work it's not going to work until we work through it through physically to be honest in my experience it didn't work by itself on its own really working it through physically it starts with the body that way you can be present as well and be surrendering to the moment and in the moment itself so I hope that helps. I wish you guys all a very good ho long holiday. A wonderful, blessed time. Not just this time, but for the next year. I'll also post a link on uh, of what I might do as a recording of a Saturnian energy, because it is holidays. But also look forward to the Uranian energy. I'm making a, a sort of a meditative video. Well, not video, but like a meditation background sort of music look out for that one and I hope to see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Blessed be.